you have Espresso Agent or Vulcan 7, which is extremely eerily similar, this is how you'd want to configure it. Hey, how's it going, guys? Mike Kramer here with the Wolf Packet EXP Realty, and I'm here to do our continued video series on Espresso Agent. And so if you need to configure your Espresso Agent to best optimize your calls and to get the most out of your dial sessions, increase your contacts per hour, and get more listings this year, this is the video for you. So we're going to just do a quick but thorough deep dive into configuring and setting up Espresso Agent once you get started. Let's dive in. When you first log in and you go through that launch in the last video, we talked about signing up for the various training things and whatnot. You'll see you have new leads coming in, but what you wanna do is just start off on your upper right and go to my account, open that. And you're gonna to wanna to put in all your information here, your name, your company. A lot of this is populated already from when you signed up. Um, but just make sure it's accurate, uh, your time zone, everything here. Uh, and on the left side, I usually go through all these things, but really login credentials, just make sure you have a very strong password. Don't mess around. Your MLS, this isn't set up too, but you can always go here to MLS settings and change the zip code that it's gonna do a radius of and uh, the miles radius from that zip code. So make sure you're getting enough leads. Remember most brokerages, check with your broker, but most brokerages will let you refer to other licensed people, uh, to other li licensed agents. For example, I don't want to go really do Metro Chicago very much, but if I get some leads from there, I can refer to agents that are experts in that area. I can get a fee, 20, 25, 30%, whatever you want to charge. They do basically all the work, but you know, I gave them the lead. So it's just be aware of that option, especially if you're new, you may not know that that's a thing that you can do. Under back office here, we'll just go through all the settings real quick, but you don't have to change most of these. So this just says you want to use plain text email only. I would just leave it at no. I mean, if people are, you're having real bad problems, I maybe change it to yes, but then you're going to have ugly emails. So it's, you're kind of screwed either way. So then if you click on calendar, you're going to get this default calendar view. You can integrate this. Like if you have Google workspace, like I do, you can integrate this with your Google calendar, which is pretty cool and have the appointments get generated in there to a calendar of your choosing. These are just general calendar settings where you can set up your working hours and it'll set appointments in there. Sync with Google Calendar, you can do that here. I already set up the sync, so now there's a list of my calendars in there that I can just pick which one I want it to sync with. Of course, there's all your billing options here. And then for mobile alerts setup and system alerts under here, there's a email address you could actually get text to your phone by sending in an email. So you can look up here, there's a link, I'll walk you through the most common providers for mobile service. You can get alerts sent right to your text. Like maybe it's a new lead, maybe it's, you know, something else. And then system alerts here, you can have them emailed to you, sent to your mobile. Uh, or in-app notifications, which is just in here. There is no mobile app for Espresso Agent. Vulcan 7 does have one, but you are paying about 80 bucks a month more for that. I don't know if I see much of the value there because if I'm dialing, I want to be in front of my computer generally. And if somebody calls you back, it's going to show their real caller ID, even if they're, even though it's forwarding the number. So unless you're answering your phone, like, and you, you want to answer it differently each time, I don't see the issue uh, for that. But that's depends on your callback number. You can tell, have it go to any callback number you want, a Google Voice number, or something like that. So we'll get into that in a second. You can see what it did when we went to my account is it actually pulled up settings with all these different tabs and we were in my account tab. So you can kind of work backwards, you can go forward, whatever you want to do. But if we just go left to right under contacts, you have number of contacts per page. Sometimes 25 is, is a little low or gets annoying, but then again, you're calling. You don't really need to look at several at once. Remember your most recent sorting selection. I just go with the defaults unless you find that, hey, I want to change how this is behaving. Show tags, yeah, these are all defaults, right? Contacts to display first. Off market's the default. I'd go with that because you're going to get the most new leads in the off market folder generally. Save last search setting, you know, why not? I mean, these are all, again, these are default. And then under contacts here, there's all the things for like email and phone scripts. What's funny about these menus is if, if you click on like dial sessions, you're fine. But then when you go to like phone scripts here, you'll see kind of the, we went to contacts and then I clicked on um oh yeah there's one where it jumped right there yeah so if you see we're on settings here under contacts and then i click the second one email and phone scripts this whole menu changed it jumped over to email over here and so that's why we're getting the different menu here and it's email library so and we're on phone script so i did if you want to edit these it won't let you edit the defaults which is fine uh, the defaults are okay, but I, I found some better scripts that I have a lot more uh, higher success rate. 
And a lot of them were done with neuro-linguistic programming and all these people that study that and that sort of thing with pat pattern interrupts and getting people um, to agree. And it's, it's not the annoying, forceful salesman, old school type, the high pressure. I don't like any of that. I like Brandon Mulrennan's reverse selling kind of methods as well as Ricky Carruth's more friendly, like how can I help you? How can I be of service type of thing? So I've kind of combined a lot of those ideas uh, into my own scripts here. And let me know in the comments if you want access to that. I'll, I'll put a link somewhere too. Um, my old link went to really KramerNow.com and it had, uh, it was a challenge I was running, but I'm redoing all that. So I want to have a way for you guys to get links um, and sign up for this. Uh, it'll basically be a free course that you can kind of go through. Um, and then I'll, maybe I'll do the challenge again from time to time. But, uh, but anyway, I am redoing all that. So just let me know in the comments if you want access to the scripts. And what's cool about it, I really like this about Espresso Agent and I'm pretty sure Vulcan does this too. So what you do is duplicate it here. You copy it, it'll create another one. You can rename it. The one thing is they didn't have anything for like cold calling or geo script, you know, people that were not FISBO or expired or canceled. And you could really use the same script for canceled that you're using for expired, or you could use a cold call script. So, the, and they don't have FURBO scripts for like investors. So I'll be adding that too. You don't see it here yet, but so all I did was clone these two and then I modified them. I just put my initials so I know it's from me. And then you'll see this edit button show up, which it, of course doesn't let you edit it. And what I want to show you, we're going to preview it real quick. It says, hi, Sally, right there, right? And then like a city name here. And it says uh, Sally again, somewhere in here. This is what's cool about it. The reason it does that, it has these merge fields, right? You'll see them in blue right here. So all you're doing is you can type your script and then you click this guy and merge codes, they call them. And the recipient's like who you're calling because it's it kind of came from email verbiage, right? Like, like the sender, you're sending them an email, they're the recipient. I'm just saying like, hi, Sally, right? Hi, this is Mike, I'm a local realtor. And, and obviously you just type your name here, but if you have a team and they're all using the same script, you'd want to do the merge field so it shows their name. This is one thing where I had to always write down their name and I'm looking back and forth while you're on the phone and it's, I really just like having this where I could read the screen and you're going to internalize it, memorize it, but it's nice to have their name right there and stick to the script because if you're kind of chatty, gift a gab like me, you'll go off on tangents and this will really help you stick to the script. Just get more contacts per day and stuff like that. And so you can see all the things and I just put my prompts like wait for a response, whatever. And that doesn't do anything programmatically. It's just a cue for yourself. And then whether they say no or yes, you can do different stuff, but that's all there is to it with a script. But let me know if you want a copy of those. And we're gonna go back to contacts too, because that we just jumped from there. Tags are a way you can tag everyone. Like if you wanna add them to a newsletter, if you use other software for that, or any other tags you wanna do. Task campaigns are a workflow for your contacts. I haven't really gotten into that. It seems like it might be cool. Custom fields, I don't have any. Folders, I am gonna probably create a couple. It shows you what, what's neat about this right here is it's showing you how many contacts at a glance are in each one. And so you could see that most of your stuff's gonna be an off market. And I was surprised I actually have more in the investors than FISBO right now. I haven't added my sphere yet really, and just some test numbers. <laughs> and relisted, you, you never wanna call that, right? Like they have another agent already. So just avoid that. And of course there's no phone numbers here, so there's nothing you could do with those. But you could add new folders and have nested, you know, like child and parent. You know, like subfolders, right? And that's good for not just follow up. A lot of people do attempt one, attempt two, attempt three, and have up to 10 attempts under each of these main ones. And then once you've gotten past 10, you just kind of ditch the contact because they're dead. I mean, you could throw them in a cold folder, cold leads or cold follow up, whatever you want to call it. And then if you're just bored, you can call that later, but that's how that works. And then searches, we have uh, some safe searches, anything. You can name them whatever you want. I'll show you later as a way to get some new leads from here based on criteria that you could save. Then there's layouts, which I don't mess with that either. Now under dial sessions, I spent a lot of time in here. Um, this is what I highly recommend you doing is the ringing. I like to hear it so you know it's working. That's a preference. Change this ringing duration though. It defaults to 35, I believe. It's really in the US, we have four seconds ringing or two seconds ringing, four seconds off. So it's a six second ring cycle. Really at four rings, you're either getting voicemail or 
just probably really annoying somebody. So if you think about four rings is six times four is 24 seconds. This is already past four rings. I can't go any smaller. I'd probably consider even doing 20 seconds here. 35 is to me just crazy because it's almost like six rings. You're almost always going to get a voicemail. Some people like leaving voicemails. I recommend never leaving a voicemail. Some people swear to leave a voicemail. I'm in the camp of never leaving a voicemail for a few reasons. One is unless they really needed you and or know you, they're not going to call you back. It's not going to compel them to call you back. Two is you might just annoy them. They could just block you right away with a click of a button from there and it slows you down. There's really no good reason to leave a voicemail in my opinion unless you know the person or you're following up and you've spoken before. That's the only time I would. Put that to 25 seconds. Dial session email delivery. It's fine. I mean you could say yes here based on the outcome. I think it disables it. By default not going to send them anything unless you set that up separately. You don't want to really disable it globally here is what that is. Remove duplicate numbers. Yes that's all default. Show username. Um, um, and note timestamps. That's really if you have a team, you might want to add that. Otherwise, go with the default of no. Voicemail data retention, um, and it's just how long it'll keep those voicemails. So really, that's the main thing you want to change right here is the ring duration set to 25. And I like the ringing, yes, but that's another thing. Call outcomes are really quick buttons. This is where you're going to save a lot of time over other software is at each call, whether you spoke or not, you can say, hey, I'll send you out my real estate resume with a, a guide to selling your home fast. And you can have that all in a canned email. And at the end of the call, you can click a button. It'll hang them up, you know, hang up the call, send them an email, assuming you've got their email <laughs> and permission, and can even move them to another folder with one click of one button and you're on to the next call already. And it can tag them for like a newsletter if you need to export them to another software or whatever. It can do all that stuff automatically. So you can keep your numbers up and just make more calls and get more contacts per hour. So to me, that's awesome. That's the big time saver is these call outcomes and that's the automation. We'll go over more of that later. I just wanna show you the things I would change in here. Um, this guy's fine. I would just leave this as is for now. Call recording, just check with the laws in your state and whatnot. Broker approves, you often have to announce it or whatever or just check the laws in your state. Caller ID library, you can add other caller ID numbers to call from. They highly recommend you use the espresso agent numbers, so I wouldn't change that unless you have a good reason to. Your blacklist is just if people say, hey, never call me again, you can click a blacklist from the dial session and they'll show up in this list. If you accidentally put them in, you can always pull them out from here. And then back to the phone scripts here is another way to get to that. And then under advanced, there's call transfer and opt out. And this is if you're transferring to another agent on your team or if you have an inside sales agent that's gonna transfer to you or whatnot. The opt out, you could read more about that. It's just people can call this opt out number. So then there's a the callback settings uh, under general. You assign your callback number that you get from them and it's whitelisted and everything. Enable call forwarding to your cell phone or wherever you wanna get phone calls when somebody calls you back, when they receive a call call let's say you didn't talk to them and they just hit redial and call you back this is where that number will route to i would highly recommend setting up a custom voicemail greeting and they can call you back and they'll get that because you're going to want to remain in your dial session and then maybe once an hour for five ten minutes you call back anyone that called you but you want to stay in your dial session and just get your numbers up here's your callback numbers you'd set it up there here's your email with your primary email address and then set up your email sending profile this is another big thing where I'd recommend getting your your photo, your logo, whatever you want, all your info in here. Usually you'd put the address of your broker here in this can spam requirement because by law you can't really have, at least in my state in Illinois, you can't really have another address here. So you gotta put the address of your broker. Also, um, any emails that go out are gonna have this address at the bottom and you don't really want your home address on of the email that you're sending to everybody. Although you know their home address, so it's not too big a deal, but anything you put here, you can have in your email signature. It'll make that for you. Um, so just add what you want. I mean, I have a Twitter, I just don't use it. So I just I just put my website, Facebook, Instagram. And email sending configuration, you have walked you through it with a video and I set up through Gmail and that way it'll send out as your, your email address and it'll get through and it'll be authenticated and everything. So that's highly recommended. And that way, again, you can have those call outcomes where you click a button, it sends them an email and you're just on to the next call and you're you're gonna be super productive that way. Here's again, a link to those um, one touch emails and stuff that you can send out. Here's how you'd configure them. I, just like the call scripts, I would duplicate them here, copy 
and then edit and create your own with your wording and that sort of thing. I can give you copies of what I use for emails. It's, it's not that complex or anything. You just want to sound natural and nice and compel them to work with you and everything like that. So appointment emails, again, I just duped it, customized it. Here's your email signature. I went with, you wanna create one, let's view it. And you can have one with the logos. I just didn't like all that. I would have liked to have the icons here for the socials, but who cares? I just want it to be pretty clean and the logo shows up pretty large in there. So maybe I gotta manually shrink it. Uh, it looked obnoxious, but you can have your logo in there if you want. And personal customization codes. I don't know if I'm gonna use this, but I added some links like Calendly, my different YouTube channels, my client and agent websites. And that way, I think I can add these now as um, maybe dynamic fields in an email or whatever. There's various integrations you can have in here. I haven't really set up. And then we're back to the My Account that we went through already. So those were the couple things I would highly recommend configuring in your Espresso agent before you get started. And then you're going to want to get familiar with this contact screen and start making calls. So we're going to do that in the next video. Stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next one.